Grounded is a game that has piqued my interest since I first saw its footage many years ago. The idea of blending a sandbox survival game with the concept of 1989's Honey I Shrunk the Kids movie seemed like the perfect pairing and the game has cultivated a large following over the years. Xbox and Obsidian have done a commendable job of ensuring the game is available on various platforms including the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. This is our honest insight into the game and how it runs on the Nintendo Switch. I'd like to thank Lee Wynn for teaming up with me, test how the game runs online, and to you for popping round to watch this review. I hope you enjoy it. If you like, subscribe, all that jazz. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. As far as the story goes, Grounded sees four teenagers waking up in a suitcase and being shrunk to the size of a bug in what appears to be someone's backyard. Although you cannot recall how you ended up in such a way, you'll soon realize that you must survive in this savage land and find the truth of what got you there in the first place. There's a wealth of lore scattered around to collect that fleshes out the story. Mainly a survival game, it combines exploration, gathering, base building and combat with up to 4 players online. There's also an option to play in a creative mode with our enemies, similar to Minecraft. Your main aim is to collect super chips by travelling around the backyard and unlock more blueprints in the main quest. Or alternatively, just spend time exploring and learning how the world operates. It's one of those games that gives the player quite a lot of freedom with minimal hand holding. Many may be put off by the fact that it's a survival game but it's not as daunting as it sounds. Your character needs to eat and drink to stay alive but these two crucial mechanics are pretty tamed as there are enough resources in the world to keep you nourished. Tool building and gathering would be the main modes of survival aiding you to hunt bugs for food, armor and shelter. Bug meat can be cooked or hung to dry creating jerky versions that do not spoil over time. You'll build hammers, axes and daggers that serve as tools and weapons. I built a few outposts around the world which made exploration a lot easier and it was exciting to see them get assaulted by groups of bugs paying me back for a recent culling by my hand. Death in the game is part and parcel of the experience and will see you drop in your bag. This will remain there until you recover it so not all is lost. It's a sense of discovery at every turn that I love most about the game and the freedom to experiment. In many ways the gameplay loop reminded me of Monster Hunter in the sense where you hunt bugs and gather resources to create weapons and armor. These also have special traits attached to them. For example, creating and donning a red ant set of armor increases the amount of grass planks and weed stems that can be carried at once, which makes base building a lot quicker. Also, the full set bonus turns all red soldier ants passive to the wearer, unless they attack any red ants or steal eggs. This is just an example of the many quirks that I found captivating within the game. As you can imagine, many areas are out of reach, but with a bit of ingenuity and engineering, you soon have access to almost all the areas of the map. How much building you do carry out in the game is pretty much up to you, but it is yet another resourceful way to reach new and high places. The multiplayer was not working at launch, but the developer had released a patch to fix it. The game allows for cross-platforming gaming, which is a nice touch. There's also an option to create a shared world. There are online shared save files that a host and anyone the host gives access to can use at any time, with or without the original host being online. So basically you just share a world together, which sounds like a really cool idea. Although I did not try it, it will definitely be something I try in the future. Inviting friends to your world in story mode does have its caveat they cannot bring over their equipment. I understand this choice by developers as inviting friends with high level gear could sully the experience. During the hour and a half online co-op session Lee and I spent time exploring, base building and eradicating the many insects that stood in our way. The experience was fun with no issues during gameplay. I'm glad to see that the game runs well online and I recommend it. The game is very addictive and offers the player a chance to experience the journey however they see fit. When I wasn't exploring, I was building or gathering, there's always something to do and discover. You'll be free to roam anywhere you like as long as you can reach it and have the right kit for the journey. The higher parts of the backyard have tougher variants of enemies so there's a leveling system in place mainly to do with your equipment level. Traversal becomes easier once you unlock the ability to build zip lines that can be connected for fast traveling. How the adventure, your adventure, plays out is up to you. <laughs>
As anticipated, the Nintendo Switch version of the game had to make some compromises in order to accommodate its scale. Visually, the game looks and runs somewhat better on other platforms and there are some instances of faraway objects popping in and out of view, but overall the performance is pretty decent. I experienced only a few instances of frame drops in specific indoor areas and I found the overall gameplay experience to be enjoyable. The game truly captures the early 90s era with scattered cassettes, action figures, BMX bikes and abundant use of neon coloured shapes in some of the prompts. It invokes nostalgia for a simpler time of box juice mascots and Saturday morning cartoons. The bugs have their own personalities and charms thanks to their design and sounds. Aphids run away when they see you, weevils toddle along while snotling like pigs and they each interact with each other as well. I witnessed larvae gang up against a laser bug which further creates the sense of a living breathing world. Arachnophobes have been catered for too with the option to change how spider models appear in the game. I was impressed by the sense of scale in the environment, many objects were difficult to identify from ground level due to my small size, but viewing them from higher vantage point and distance provide a clarity, and things are huge in this world. The developer has managed to give the player the sense of frustration which comes from being unable to carry out a simple task as easily when you are the size of a thimble. The change of perspective goes in hand with the game's mechanics so well and it creates a clever and convincing feeling of being really small. The music is minimalistic but decent, playing sci-fi music of the time. Each enemy type has its own battle theme and the voice acting and internal monologues emphasize each character's personality which is equally true for the bugs in the game. <laughs> Grounded can be downloaded for $34.99 or your original equivalent and will require 3.2 GB to download. Limited Run Games had a physical and collector's edition available from their website which has now sold out. They may appear however on other online outlets or be released officially via retail. I am truly surprised and relieved at how enjoyable the game is on the Nintendo Switch. It may look much better on other consoles but the Switch offers portability and touchscreen functionality and I would like to think that it's the same on the Steam Deck. There's also the cross-platform feature that will let you play with your friends on other consoles and play in a shared world together. Obsidian Entertainment, who also made Fallout New Vegas, has managed to create a great game that offers several playstyles alongside the DLC and an added New Game Plus that mixes the experience slightly a second time round. In short, I cannot recommend this game enough if you like RPGs or games like Minecraft regardless of which platform you own. We give Grounded a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching everyone, I hope this review has been helpful. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you think, have you played it on other platforms, are you thinking of picking it up, like I said it's it's playable, I've put in so many hours, I'm currently building the tallest tower the game can manage um, and I'm going to connect all the zip lines to it, so it's going to be my main base of operations, I'll put it in the video at some point. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. If you want to grab any of the games mentioned here physically or the upcoming Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster Collection and simultaneously supports the channel, please use our PlayAsia video link down below, free shipping on orders of a hundred dollars and if you're looking for the cool looking GameCube controller the Nixie Wizard please use our affiliate link for that in the description below use coupon code GRINNY for 10% off. Stay safe everyone, peace.